G'day, I'm Paul. This is a new Hilux. I'm so excited to drive this. It is called the Toyota Hilux. It's the GR Sport version. This kind of goes up head to head with things like the Nissan Navara Warrior, the Mazda BT50 Thunder, and the Ford Ranger. Now, whether it goes up against the Wildtrak X or the Ranger Raptor, I don't know just yet. We'll find out by the end of this review, but it's got a power bump. It's got some off-road equipment. Today, we're gonna do a detailed review of this, along with a little bit of light off-roading as well. Now, I hope you're sitting down. This is priced at just under $74,000, which is an incredible amount of money. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a new Hilux. Now, let's kick off with design. So, You've got a number of colors to choose from, but some of them you can actually option a black roof as well, which I really like the look of for a little bit extra. They've really gone to town on styling with this and I love the look of it. So down here, you've got black on the front. You've got these scallops on the side here. It really just looks so aggressive. And I just love the fact that they've really given this the look that it deserves. A standard Hilux just looks a little bit sedate. Rogue stepped it up a notch, but this really just goes to town on giving it that meaty appearance. And I'll run you through the track changes in a second as well. Down here, you've got yourself a radar Toyota badge uh, camera here for the 360 camera, and then little air inlets down the side there, full LED headlights as well. Come around to the side with me. Now, this is an interesting setup here. They have all-terrain tires. So this is a Bridgestone Jeweler, 17 inch alloy wheels. So black, uh, piano black finish on there as well. In here, they have a new suspension setup. So KYB shock absorbers. So it's a different uh, setup to every other vehicle in the Hilux range. In terms of track changes, 135 mil wider at the front here, a little over 150 mil wider at the rear. So you really can see this has big haunches on it. It really stands out a lot. In terms of your off-roading equipment, you've got underbody protection at the front there. You have recovery slash uh, tie down points at the front, but actual rated recovery points at the rear that I'll show you in a sec. Black Hilux badge here, black wing mirror. Down here, you've got rock sliders. So this is actually a proper setup there. If you are gonna be doing off-roading, you can bash these with rocks. I remember when we did the actual original Rugged X launch, we were dropping this onto rocks uh, deliberately to test these out and they seem to withstand a bit of punishment. So I guess that, that um, all works a treat there. You've got the black roof on the top there, privacy glass. Now, down the back here, there are a couple more changes. We reviewed the Rogue a little while back and I ran you through the changes to the brakes. So it's a four piston caliper up the front there and a single piston caliper at the rear, but the brakes are actually larger on the Rogue and this model as well. This still retains leaf spring suspension at the rear, but what they've done here with the dampers is moved it outboard of the chassis rails, similar to what they've done in the Rogue. They have deleted the rear stabilizer bar though. So while that was added to the road to give it additional stability on the road, they've removed it in this to give it extra articulation, which we'll check later on. But I'll be interested to see whether that affects the handling and performance of this because it has a power and torque bump under the bonnet. The Rogue itself was actually quite impressive in terms of the way that it handled. So hopefully they haven't sacrificed that by removing that equipment. Come around to the back with me. Now, before I run through the rear of this, I have to touch on towing. And Toyota just, I don't know why they've harped on about three and a half ton towing here because it actually can tow three and a half ton, but if you take into account the GCM and the curb weight, once you add a three and a half ton trailer to this, you can only add 80 kilos of payload. That is excluding passengers. Now I am slightly, and I know you won't believe this, over 80 kilos in terms of mass. If I sit in this and have a three and a half ton trailer attached to it, I will be driving this vehicle illegally and I'll be subject to a fine. So I don't know why they advertise three and a half tons when you literally couldn't feasibly tow that unless you had a passenger that was under 80 kilos and you didn't carry anything else in the vehicle. So I think that is just absolutely ridiculous. And that's the whole reason the Raptor doesn't have three and a half ton towing capacity because you wouldn't be able to achieve it. Uh, red recovery points down here, they're rated. You've got Hilux GR Sport badge. You've got partial LED tail lights in there, incandescent globes just here. Toyota badge over here, an offset camera. So when you're backing your trailer in, you're gonna have no real idea of when you're hitting that center point. Brake light integrated into the tray there. Now, no uh, torsion bar, no hydraulics here. It's all sort of pretty straightforward. So that is very heavy to lift. GR badge over there. Now in terms of the tray, it's 1570 mil deep, 1645 mil wide with just over 1100 mil between the wheel arches. And then it gives you a final payload figure of under 800 kilos. But again, keep in mind, if you are towing, it is going to be less than that by the time you look at your GCM. Uh, outside of that, nothing too special in here. You've got a few hooks off to the side and a GR 
thing up the front there as well. So let me know what you reckon about the design of this thing in the comments section below. Do you think it looks good? Do you reckon they should have advertised it with three and a half ton towing capacity? I'm keen for your thoughts. So we are in the GR Sport Hilux. This is what the key looks like. You've got lock, unlock, panic, Toyota logo, a bit of chrome on the back, the GR logo. And then once you're inside, you've got a push button start just over here. Another GR logo there, just in case you didn't have enough GR logos. Um, so what do we reckon about this interior? Well, look, it is getting very, very dated. It has been like this for a long time now. So obviously Toyota is working on a new Hilux, but um, yeah, this is well overdue for an update. Scratchy surfaces with fake stitching, bizarrely up the top there. Um, this sort of chintzy looking material here as well. Um, yeah, small screen. It just, it's in desperate need of an overhaul. But they've jazzed it up a bit here with the GR stuff. So you've got this uh, red stripe down the center here, like you find on uh, Ranger Raptor and a couple of other sort of uh, sportier cars. Gives you an idea of where the center of the wheel is in case you're drifting. Um, no risk of that happening in this. Uh, you've got paddle shifters here on the steering wheel, the GR Sport badge there, another GR. Uh, logo up the top there, this sort of Alcantara suede style material in the center with uh, the sort of leather cladding on the sides. So it's like that, it's all sort of pretty straightforward in here. Now, what about your touch points? So that is soft to the touch, slightly firmer on the door there. How soft is it? We've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. I should actually remember to mention that, red seat belts as well. Build quality. What's it like? So a little wonky there in the center. But okay, up the top is what the door sounds like. Now infotainment, uh, so I mentioned before, it hasn't really changed a great deal. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail here because we went through this uh, in the Rogue review recently. So if you do want a bit more detail on this, you can click up there to watch our Rogue review. Uh, eight inch display, AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, excellent JBL branded nine speaker sound system, better than the uh, Ranger sound system. You get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both systems are wired. This is what Apple CarPlay looks like from our Rogue review, and then this is what Android Auto looks like as well. So pretty straightforward setup there. Tiny little screen there ahead of the driver as well with trip computer and other sort of critical details as well. Now, safety, you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror, blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror. You have rear cross traffic alert. You have radar cruise control. You have a lane departure warning type thing. Uh, you've got front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. That is absolutely terrible. I don't think I've seen a worse camera in a new car. So yeah, no, I don't even understand why that's there as well. So yeah, what a odd setup. So um, yeah, I think they can definitely do better there. This is the side, I think. And then uh, this is what the rear camera looks like. There it is. So the rear camera is slightly better, but again, you can't see over that horizon. So it's okay for hooking things up to your trailer with your offset angle there. But um, yeah, aside from that, it's not very good. And this is what the horn sounds like. Now let's chat practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you've got a 12 volt outlet, a single USB A slot. Uh, you don't have any wireless phone charging. You kind of just pop your phone wherever and it kind of fits in there. Uh, in terms of cup storage, so coffee cup fits into there. There are no teeth though, so it means that when you get your bottle in, it kind of just moves around all over the place. Um, actually, there's a second 12 volt outlet here. So there you go, that makes up for the one USB port. Um, in terms of storing a bottle inside the door, let's try a big one, see if that fits in there. Yep, that fits in, beautiful. Uh, other storage, you've got a cup holder here in front of the air vent along with passenger side as well. Center console here with a power outlet, which is really cool to see. You've got one glove box down the bottom here that is reasonably sized and it opens the cup holder somehow. Uh, you've got a glove box up the top here as well. And then finally, you have a sunglasses holder here too. Now let's talk comfort. So the seats aren't too bad. Uh, they sort of hug you in pretty nicely. You do have uh, dual zone climate control now, which is good. Uh, you also have seat heating, but just one setting. It's either just on or off. 
you just push that, that, that happens. Uh, driver's seat is electrically adjustable, so you can go forwards and backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards. You can lift the front of the seat, you can lift the back of the seat. Uh, it's all sort of uh, pretty good. Passenger seat is manually adjustable. Steering offers both tilts and reach adjustment, and on our reach test, all of that stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, second row. Uh, before I hop in, let me just give you a little sticky beak here of what this looks like. So, seat can go up, it reveals a couple of hidey holes for the jack, and then just a couple of odds and ends, and it means you can load things in sideways if you need to. But once that is down, climb on in. Now I've got my driver's seat in my regular sort of driving position. There isn't really much leg room, so knee room is right into the back of that. Toe room is not very good at all, and head room is okay. Uh, other sort of creature comforts, you've got little hooks here for storing your stuff. You've also got air vents down here, no USB ports there. Center armrest here with two cup holders. You have uh, isofix points on the two outboard seats and then also two top tether points as well. In terms of uh, bottle storage, you can pop that in the door if you want to. Now, window test. So it's auto up and down. Then it goes all the way down. Very good. Okay, we've just hit the road in the Hilux the GR Sport version. So uh, this is actually a little bit different. So when we drove the Rogue a little while back, uh, it had the same engine tune as the rest of the Hilux range, but it had a lot of the mechanical changes that this gets. Uh, and as a result of that, it felt a little bit sluggish. And even though they did all the great work to the suspension and, and the, the handling components, felt a little bit sluggish because all of that stuff added weight. This time around, they've actually increased everything by around 10%. So you're getting 165 kilowatts of power, 550 newton meters of torque. So that's up from 150, 500. Uh, so it is uh, markedly different there in terms of the output. It's all still mated to the same six speed automatic transmission, but they have made some tweaks there to, to make this drive and feel a little bit different. So first thing I notice, it is very bouncy. Um, even uh, while we're driving around slowly here around the track, it is sort of bouncing around all over the place. So it does feel stiffer than the Rogue. It is still um, sort of, it's quite strange. It's softly sprung, but it's quite firmly damped. So you do get a little bit of that sort of movement around the place. Now, do you notice that 50 Newton meter difference behind the wheel? Let's give this a little punch. Yeah, look, you do. It's, it's not like a huge difference. Let me go from a slower speed there. It's not like a huge, huge difference, but you do definitely notice that it has a bit more go. It's still a little bit laggy there off the line. Yeah, and the gear shifts are slightly sharper as well. It's, it's a little bit more eager to get up and move there. So from that point of view, it's great. You've got paddle shifters here behind the steering wheel if you do need to operate things yourself. Now, in terms of fuel economy, um, this I really don't understand. This has more power and torque uh, but the fuel economy is rated less than the Rogue, which has less power and torque. So this is rated at just over eight litres per 100 k's. Uh, it's currently sitting on 11.1 and kind of doesn't surprise me. Uh, these things aren't overly efficient. The second you make them higher and do all of that sort of trendy stuff up the front there, it starts eating into your fuel economy because you're creating a whole lot more uh, drag and resistance as this cuts through the air. So that is just one thing to keep in mind. Still not the end of the world and certainly significantly better than a Raptor in terms of fuel economy. One thing they have kept, which is a little bit disappointing, is the hydraulic steering. So it is heavy at times and it can load up when it becomes a little flustered as well. So not a huge fan of that. Hopefully they will move to an EPAS system with the next generation of Hilux. Now, let's dial up the speed. When we went over our sine waves at 130 in the SR5, it actually left the ground. That's how poorly tuned that was in terms of body control. Let's see what it's like here with the different suspension hardware in GR Sport. So there's 130. Oh, that's great. That is really nice. So you can actually tell that they've put a lot of work into ensuring that that ride is actually really well balanced and the body control is on point as well. So while it won't be entirely comfortable in and around the city, it does actually feel really nice and settled there once the speed picks up. Now, bumpiest road in Australia, 90 k's an hour, let's do it. See what this is like. It's full of corrugations. We've got a condensed sine wave here as well. All right, here we go. Shakes the living daylights out of the car, as you can hear in my voice. Yeah, look over this stuff. 
actually has decent road holding. It is pretty rough. You do get thrown around a fair bit, but it is holding on very nicely and doing a great job with all the corrugations and potholes. So, yeah, very nicely done, Toyota. Now, there are no sort of drive modes. You just have a power mode here that sort of sharpens the throttle up a bit. Let's go for a fang around our track. Wow, that is significantly sharper. When I step on that, you can actually feel a huge difference there. Brake pedal feels great. I think the Ranger, standard Ranger has the same tyres and they love a squeal, but it's giving us a decent amount of road holding there. It's actually moving along really nicely. So uh, I mentioned in the Rogue review that that extra track really helps settle the vehicle on, on a faster track like this. And this with the same extra track, but without that stabiliser bar, has that same level of uh, settled ride, but it has a little bit more body roll. Let's see what it's like on our back section here. The gearing's not great either. It's not letting me kick down there and pick up the pace. I thought this was just going to be a bit of a sticker pack, but um, this is absolutely hauling here. It's actually really fun to drive. All right, here we go. Back straight. Yeah, I'm pinned to the board here, uh, sitting at like 2,500 RPM. It's not kicking down, but it is really piling on the pace there. Wow. That was, that was moving. That was bloody impressive. Okay. There you go. I was not expecting that. Um, Quite surprised by that uh, because the brake pedal feels significantly better in this than it does in the Raptor. The brakes actually feel much stronger as well. In the Ford, you get brake fade very quickly, whereas this, you can punish them a fair bit and they actually still stay nice and strong. And once it gets to about 2,500 RPM, and even at those higher speeds, that torque band is fantastic. It really sort of hoofs along nicely. So yeah, good effort, Toyota. This is actually a really fun car to drive. So in terms of road noise, it's a bit of a funny one. Uh, tire noise is actually really quite impressive, but there is a lot of wind noise that's coming in about the uh, wing mirrors, which is a little bit annoying. So um, only sort of complaint there in terms of the noise. Uh, and in terms of turning circle, it comes in at just under 13 metres. So it is a big old turning circle. Now, in terms of visibility, I can see clearly down the front there, uh, wing mirrors are nice and big, so I can see down the side. I've got blind spot monitoring built into those. Visibility out the rear is good as well. Side steps make it a little hard to get in and out. They're quite narrow, so you kind of have to step over them and get your jeans dirty if you've been off-roading, so that is probably just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's do a little bit of performance testing here. Uh, before we do that, let me tell you about Help Me Car Expert. We have a stack of vetted dealers that we deal with uh, to get you guys who view our video content and visit our website the best deal on a new car. So we have Toyota dealers all over the country. If you do want one of these, uh, some of these are in stock. Go to Google, type in Help Me Car Expert, inspired by our friends at CarWow, uh, to get all of the details. Alrighty, so let's see how we go here. We don't have an official zero to 100 time, uh, but we'll see how we go. I'm gonna turn traction control off. We've got it in power mode. We'll go all the way through to 120 and we will see how it goes. Here we go. Load up the throttle a little. All right, it's off the line. Feels strong once it hits second. All right, there's a hundred. And there's 120. I'll come to a stop. Let's see how that went. Okie dokie. 0 to 100, 9.54 seconds. Not the fastest thing in the world, not the slowest. I might actually do that run one more time and load up the throttle a little bit more. Uh, 80 to 126.9 seconds. So that number is actually pretty good. It actually shows you that this has a whole lot of legs once it is up and moving, but uh, let's give that 0 to 100 run one more shot. Here we go. A little bit of wheel slip off the line. All right, and there's 100. So second run, 9.5, so really not that much better. I think that is about as good as it's gonna get. Okay, so time to stop from 100 k's an hour. Let's see how this performs. So there's 100, here we go. Okay, 
Okie So it is slightly still damp here from this morning, but see how that performed. So 100 to zero took 3.22 seconds and 41.95 meters. Uh, not too bad, it's similar to the results we've seen in other vehicles that are fitted with these all terrains. So it's about sort of where you'd expect it to be. And now our reverse acceleration test. Now we did discover last time that if you turn traction control off, this actually goes a little bit quicker, so. Okay, so 44 kilometers an hour. Okay, it is time for us to do a little bit of light off-roading. So, I want to run you through the specs here. So this is uh, a two-wheel drive high-range vehicle uh, most of the time. You can't drive it on sealed surfaces in four-wheel drive high-range. And if you want to know why, click up here to watch a video that we shot explaining that. Um, but it is worth pointing out, you can drive it on four-wheel drive high-range on unsealed surfaces like gravel and, and sand and mud and all that sort of stuff. You've got low range, you have a rear diff lock that only works in low range. Uh, you have a hill descent control uh, and a traction control switch that I'll run you through in just a second. In terms of the rest of the full drive specs, so 700 millimetre weighting depth, you have an approach angle of 30 degrees, which is the angle of the face you can approach before you hit the front of the car. Now the confusing thing is, um, despite this having a totally different front end there, it's one degree less than the Rogue, so in theory the Rogue has a better approach angle, but um, yeah, so a bit of an odd one there. Departure angle, 23 degrees, which is the same, but in reverse, and then Toyota quotes a ground clearance of 265 mil, which is Quite a lot, um, so yeah. All right, let's see how we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off in two-wheel drive high range, and I'm gonna leave everything on. We're gonna go to our offset mogul, and it's at our offset mogul that we'll test the traction control and see how well that works and how well it can contain wheel slip. So here it is here, we'll just wait for that rear tire to get off the ground, which is just there. Now what I'm gonna do is just lean on the throttle. And uh, also what we'll do, we'll overlay a shot of what the Rogue looked like in this same position. So keep in mind the Rogue had uh, a rear stabiliser bar which limits the amount of articulation you can get from that rear wheel. So see how this performs. So I've got my foot on the throttle there. My foot is now flat to the board and the traction control isn't really helping here at all. So I'm gonna let off that. What I'm gonna do now is one push of the traction control button. So what that does is it turns traction control off, but it leaves stability control on. It also engages a sort of virtual limited slip differential where it uses the brakes to bite. In theory, that should be enough for this to get out. So roll onto the throttle again. Yeah, there you go. I can immediately feel that. And I'll just leave it up there just so we can get our uh, comparison shot with the Rogue. But yeah, I can actually immediately feel that working as an LSD and limiting that wheel slip. So great system and it's good to see that that actually works exactly as intended. So yeah, very nice, unreal. All righty, let's go back and we're gonna try this now the other way around in four-wheel drive high range. Okay, so this time around, traction control back on. I'm gonna pop that into four-wheel drive high range. Uh, we're going to approach our offset mogul. This is set up so that we can have a bit of a, a cross axle situation where we have only two wheels with traction on the ground. And then we'll see how it manages that situation. I'll try it again with and without traction control. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna roll onto the throttle. Okay, so traction control is flashing. It's sitting there trying to move, but it's not really working. So I'm gonna stop that. Uh, I'm going to push traction control once just to see how that works. Here we go, onto the throttle again. Now it's interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, it doesn't actually engage the virtual uh, LSD now. It's a very strange system. So if it did engage that virtual LSD, it'd allow less slip on the rear axle, which would get us over this easily, but it's not done that. And you can't engage the rear diff lock when you're in high range. So uh, it seems to perform a bit better with traction control on. So I'll just give it a slightly harder punt here. There it is, okay. So yeah, I think uh, the Achilles heel to this really is that you don't have that level of customization that you do in uh, two wheel drive that you do in four wheel drive. So if I do want to use the rear diff lock, I'm gonna have to go down to full, full low. Um, so it'd just be nice if I could just engage that whatever I wanted. I don't know why they lock it into just low range. Okay, it is a low range time. We've got our hill here. Uh, so what we do, I'm gonna try go up there just with constant throttle. Uh, if it makes it up or even if it doesn't, I'm gonna come back again, uh, drive up the hill, come to a full stop, 
see how well the hill hold works and then get onto the throttle again. So I'm gonna pop this into low range. There it is there. I'm also gonna lock the rear diff for this as well. All right, that is all engaged. So we'll go up with constant throttle. And we'll see how it goes here with these all terrains. So far, so good. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Okay, that was a piece of cake. Very good. Go through our mud bog here. Okay, okay. Yeah, no dramas there at all. So, uh, yeah, that worked really well. Uh, pretty straightforward with the rear diff locked. It just climbs up there like an absolute champ. So, all right, we've got our hill here. Uh, let's pop this front camera on and just have a little look over the edge of the car there. Quality of that camera isn't very good. Um, I'm going to disable rear diff lock there. ever to disengage. It's not the best system in the world. Still not good. There we go. Okay, it's disengaged. So uh, hill descent control is active. So I'll just bring it up to the top here. Just come to a stop. And we'll see how it goes. All right, here we go. That's good. Nice speed. I can't adjust the speed using the cruise control. So it's just a set speed by the look of it. But yeah, that works pretty well and, and no real dramas there. Okay, hill time again. So this time I'm gonna to come to a stop as we climb this to see how well the hill hold works. And also how well it is uh, able to just take off from a standing start. So there it is there, let go of the brake, roll onto the throttle. Yeah, that rear diff lock is really just doing all of the legwork here. So yeah, nice, very nicely done Toyota. Okay, rock time, so with 265 mil of ground clearance. This should be a piece of cake. You've got your rock sliders here as well. We'll see how comfortable it is. Uh, so I've left the rear diff locked and I'll just ride the brake with the throttle to get us over this. Oh, this is so comfy. <laughs> yeah, no dramas there. Uh, the front protection there is stopping this from having a rock go through it. It's actually surprisingly comfortable inside here. It's really good. Stop that from bouncing around. Yeah, nice ride is um, ride is fantastic. They've actually really put a lot of thought into just making this feel super comfortable for this type of driving. You know, you feel like they've actually thought about it for once, as opposed to some brands that just go, me, you know, it'll do. Okay, it's time to do a water crossing. Okay, here we go. A little puddle to get through here. Sensor's annoying. Switch that off. Okie dokie. So yeah, 700 mil weighting depth. Our little crossing here is around 700 at the moment. So let's see how it goes. Drop it into here. Yeah, nice. Very comfortable. No issues there at all. We'll see what the climb's like out of here in terms of approach angle. Cool, no touching. Very nice. Right, get out of here as well. Beautiful, okay, so there you go. Um, yeah, look, I think no surprises here. It's kind of the exact same as the road, just with different tires, pretty much. Um, so yeah, on the off-road front, really not a great deal has changed, but that's good, I think. There's no real sort of surprises. It's also pretty straightforward. So the Hilux GR Sport, what do we reckon? Look, to be honest, I came into this thinking that it was just going to be a sticker pack and I didn't actually think it was going to be all that good. It has proven me wrong. The work they've done to the engine is perfect. It is exactly what it needed, gives it the punch in the back that it needs and it doesn't have the fussy 10 speed auto that the Ranger has. This is a six speed auto. It just does what it says on the box and then that mid range is excellent, really picks up and moves. So uh, from that point of view, I think they've done a great job there. I'd love it if they could fit an LSD to this because this morning when I was mucking around with it, it just spins the inside wheel up and LSD would really just give it that extra bit of surety on the road, especially when it does get a little bit damp. Is it different enough from the Rogue though? Uh, not really in terms of the mechanicals and the way that it, it feels behind the wheel. Where it is different though is the engines. That is gonna be the key difference and the justification for spending a bit more money than the Rogue. So yeah, let me know what you reckon in the comments section below.
75 grand or thereabouts, do you think this is worth the money? I'm keen for your feedback. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.